All right, let's start off with the case as I think that this is probably one of the most interesting parts of this build. This is the new Dan A3 and it's in collaboration with Lean Lee. Now this isn't the first time that Dan and Lean Lee have done a collaboration like this. They've also made the Dan A4 H2O, which is one of the most beloved and popular cases in the SFF community. Now, one of the big differences between that and this is that that one's a mini ITX, whereas this is a micro ATX case. So it's 26 liters and it's also a lot less expensive than the Dan A4 H2O. It's $70. And I can already say right off the bat that the build quality here feels like it's a lot more expensive. The side panels here are made of a you know pretty solid steel, like very little flex to them. So getting into the case, we've got a couple of push pins for the side panels and then a couple of thumb screws on the top to get this top panel off. So that just pulls out from the back. And that gives us enough room for a 360 millimeter radiator at the top. We've also got room for 320 millimeter fans at the bottom and then another 120 at the back. Now the layout here is also really similar to the ASUS AP201. So you've got your micro ATX board here on the left and then a bracket for your power supply unit and then plenty of space for a large uh, GPU across here. Uh, I think you can have up to 336 millimeters before it hits the power supply unit, but the power supply unit is able to move up and down to accommodate for a longer GPU if you needed to. So let's actually put this aside and then we're gonna actually prep our motherboard to see what it's like to build in this case. This video is sponsored by Ugreen and their new Nexode X 160 watt charger. This is a compact four port charger that uses a new generation of GAN technology, which brings you a faster and more powerful charging experience with less heat generation. It is incredibly efficient and lightweight so that it won't take up too much space or add too much weight to your bag. It's also 21% smaller than the original 140 watt USB-C charger and much smaller than the one that came with my MacBook Pro 16. Yet it can still charge my MacBook Pro 250% in only 27 minutes using the PD 3.1 protocol, allowing up to 140 watts from a single USB-C port. Now this is designed to charge up to four devices at the same time. So it's got three USB-C ports, a single USB-A so that it can accommodate everything from Windows handhelds to laptops, providing up to 160 watts across all of those devices. It also includes Samsung's 45 watt fast charging for the devices that support it. If you wanna check out Ugreen's Nexodex charger, I'll leave a link in the description below. Now I am going for a performance focused build here. So it's $1,500 and we're gonna to try to put as much of that budget as possible towards the GPU. For the CPU, I'm gonna be going with the AMD 7600. Now, I think that this is a really good entry point into the AM5 platform, which is the newest platform from AMD. You could save some money by going on you know, their older AM4 platform. You could potentially save some money on the motherboard and the RAM in that situation. But honestly, if I'm building a new PC in 2024, I'm gonna wanna be on the latest platform. That way you have upgradability over the next few years. And you know, upgradability aside, the 7600 is still a beast of a CPU. We've got six cores, 12 threads, which is gonna be more than enough for most games. And in fact, a lot of games don't even benefit from more cores than this. If they do, it's not really by much. So this is gonna be a good CPU in its own right. Now for the board we're gonna be plugging this into, I'm going with the Asus Tough Gaming A60M Plus. For this build, we obviously need a micro ATX board. Uh, with this one being a high focus on you know, the most performance for the money, I decided to go with an A series board. Typically, I would go for a B series board in most of my builds as I've kind of found B series to be the right balance between cost and features. But something that's important to note when it comes to building a gaming PC and your motherboard is that aside from some overclocking features, your motherboard is not gonna affect your performance. You're really just paying for the different features that you need. So you'll wanna make sure that whatever motherboard you choose, you'll have the correct headers for your case that you chose, and also you know things like Wi-Fi or any other features that you, you know, feel like you need in your build. So we got enough USB ports here, Wi-Fi 6 built in, and then we also have headers for our uh, USB-C, USB 3.2. Now, one of the downsides is that it doesn't have a heat sink for the two M.2 drives here. You know, if you really felt the need, you can buy an M.2 drive that has a heat sink already built onto it. Let's get our CPU out and we're gonna lift this lever here to open up the latch. And then we can gently lower our CPU right into the socket with that arrow pointing in the top left. Okay, and once it's all the way in there, Give it a good shake to make sure that it's completely secure. Then we can close the lid and then tighten the latch. Now for RAM, I'm gonna be going with the Team Group T-Create Expert 32 gigs. 
and this is DDR5 6000 memory. Now with a build at this price point, I wouldn't recommend anything less than 32 gigs. You could technically get away with 16 gigs of, of RAM, you know, in a gaming build, but you're not gonna really have much headroom for doing any sort of multitasking or having anything running in the background. RAM is not too much more expensive now, especially DDR5 has gone down a lot in price um, since when it first came out. So I would highly recommend trying to get with, with 32 gigs. Now 6,000 megahertz is gonna be the sweet spot for cost, stability, and performance. And this one also has a cast latency of 30 making it a really fast set. Now, another thing that you wanna make sure of is that you get the correct overclocking profile with whatever set of RAM that you pick up. So for AMD, that's gonna be Expo and Intel, that's gonna be XMP. Now, the nice thing about this set is it actually has, it has both. So that's pretty convenient and not really something that you see on a lot of kits. Now, in order to enable dual channel memory, we're gonna to wanna to follow these color codings that are on the dim slots. So we're gonna be using slot two and four. And once we get the notch correctly aligned, we can gently slide them in until they click into place. For the SSD, we're gonna keep it really simple. I'm just gonna go with a terabyte stick from Crucial. So this is a P3 Plus. I wouldn't recommend getting anything under a terabyte nowadays unless you're you know, extremely strict on your budget because a lot of these games are getting so large that even with a terabyte, you're really only gonna be able to install a handful. And so for the CPU cooler, I'm gonna be going with the Arctic Freezer 36. Now this one has gotten a ton of good reviews. It's supposed to be pretty quiet and uh, work pretty well. It's also only around $30. So a pretty good value. Oh wow. Now the 7600 does come with a stock cooler, but those tend to be a little bit loud and they kind of run hot. And so if you have the extra 30 bucks, I mean, it's absolutely worth you know picking up a dedicated CPU cooler. And for a $1,500 build, you should absolutely pick up CPU cooler. So we just need to remove these stock AM5 brackets here. Then we can place these plastic spacers, apply our thermal paste. Then we wanna make sure that you peel off the protective sticker on the bottom of the cooler, lower it on over the CPU, aligning the two holes, and then try to screw those in evenly on each side. So I, I like to do about two to three rotations, switching off. And then from there, these fans actually kind of just cleverly pop into place. So you can just kind of snap them in, which is a lot easier than the typical clips that come on uh, air coolers. All right, so now we're actually ready to start moving everything over into the case. Starting with the IO shield, we can actually take this and pop that into the back here. My back panel, this came super bent. Like that whole thing is bowing like crazy. Look at that. Now we can take our motherboard and then lower it down into the case, aligning it with the standoffs. Interestingly, they give you one of these plastic dividers, but they don't actually separate out the screws. All of the dividers in here are still just unused. So that seems that seems kind of strange. Hopefully that's not the case in the production unit. So the bend in this back panel on my unit is actually making it pretty difficult for me to install the motherboard. So hopefully that's only a problem on my unit and it's not a widespread issue. The power supply I'm gonna be going with is the Corsair RM750E. Now Corsair is a very reliable brand. I've been using their power supplies in almost all of my builds at this point. And for $100, a 750 watt power supply, 80 plus gold from a brand that's you know recognizable and known, I think is a pretty great deal. So to get the power supply bracket off, we need to pop open this front panel. So there's a couple of push pins and then it lifts off like that. And then we can remove the two screws that are holding it in place. So by default, this does have the SFX uh, bracket installed. So we just need to remove that and we can just secure our power supply to the bracket. So one thing that is pretty cool about this case is you also have a lot of vertical positions for the power supply unit. So the higher up you go, you know, you're not gonna be able to fit your 360 millimeter radiator there because it'll be in the way, but it'll allow you to have a longer GPU. If you set it somewhere in the middle, maybe with an SFX power supply, you should be able to have enough room for both your 360 and a longer GPU. And then, you know, lower down, you're gonna have less space, I think around 336 millimeter uh, in length of GPU, but then all the space you need at the top for your uh, radiator. So for me, I'm actually just gonna put it right here at the second position for now. 
uh, because I don't actually plan to run a radiator in this, but I would like the extra space for the cable management. So now we're actually ready to start plugging everything in. So I'm actually gonna start off with the case cables here, starting with the power extension cable, which can actually just plug right in there at the top. We can plug in our HD audio, which is at the bottom left. The front panel connector is actually conveniently put into one single piece, which is really nice instead of those little individual ones that you have to you know, put in one at a time. So love to see that. And then finally, we got our USB-C and our USB 3.2 over here on the right-hand side. Okay, so now we can start plugging in our power supply cables. And the only things we're gonna need is the CPU, motherboard, and then a power cable for our GPU. So first let's plug the CPU cable into the motherboard and we can run it across the top here and then down behind the power supply unit. So it is actually pretty nicely hidden away. Then we can plug in our big 24 pin motherboard cable on the right hand side here and our GPU 12 volt high power cable for later. For the GPU, I'm going with the 4070 Ti Super. This is one of NVIDIA's latest. It just launched back in January. Now, while the original 4070 Ti was not too impressive due to its lack of VRAM for an $800 GPU, the Super version fixes that by upping it from 12 gigs to 16 gigs. What's nice about that increase is that it makes this card an even more suitable option for productivity tasks like 3D modeling and such, while of course ensuring that you have enough VRAM for all of today's games and for the foreseeable future, especially if you have any interest at all at gaming in 4K. This particular model is the ASUS Tough Edition, and it does come in at that $800 MSRP if you get the standard one. Now, I believe the overclocked version is $50 more. NVIDIA does consider this a high refresh rate 1440p card, but we can definitely do some 4K 60 gaming with it. And we'll also look at some performance numbers once this build is complete. As far as sizing, it's three and a quarter slots at 305 millimeters in length. So it's gonna have plenty of room to fit in the case. So now whenever we're ready to install our GPU, we just need to remove these two PCI Express slot covers. So we're gonna need the two top positions for this card. Then we need to make sure our PCI Express slot is open and then slowly lower our GPU into the PCI Express slot. Now, once the GPU is secured, we can just tighten back up that thumb nut and then plug in our 12 volt high power cable. All that's left to do is to re-secure the front, top and side panels. And that's the build complete. I've downloaded a few games and benchmarks. The first one here is called Furmark, and this basically puts a full load on the GPU for a set amount of time. And from there, we can monitor the temps in whichever software you choose. I'm using HW Info here. It's a free download. And yeah, the temps are looking totally reasonable. No concerns here, maxing out at 65 degrees Celsius. It's also virtually silent while running under that full load. Now I'm gonna run Cinebench R23 in the multi-core stress test. This basically puts a full load on the CPU so that we can make sure that we're getting good temps with our CPU cooler and that we've got everything installed properly. Now I'm not seeing any thermal throttling. Temps are maxing out at 87 degrees and averaging just under 84. So let's take a look at the gaming performance. I picked up two of the latest games here. This is Ghost of Tsushima. CPU and GPU temps are looking really good. Now this GPU is positioned as a high refresh rate 1440p card. So that's what I wanted to test here. The settings are 1440p with the highest preset. It's easily over 100 frames per second, really stable and smooth. And this is without any upscaling or anything like that. Now let's take a look at Hellblade 2. This one just came out about a week or so ago and it's very graphically intensive. Same resolution, highest settings, and we're still getting a 60 frames per second experience here. Now again, even though this is positioned as a 1440p card, I did test it in 4K when I did my initial review. And you can absolutely do plenty of 4K gaming on this thing. So look, I like this new Dan A3. For $70, you are really getting a lot here. I had the one minor build quality issue with the bent back panel. And you know, the front panel is uncharacteristically cheap compared to the rest of the case. It's made of a plastic, which is totally fine, but it's like a really cheap feeling plastic. But the steel on the rest of the case feels absolutely solid. I also absolutely love the look. The vertical lines in the front is super clean. It reminds me a lot of the Razer Core, a very minimalistic design, and this white version is perfect if you're wanting an all white build. I've got it next to my new 65 white and gray keyboard that I got from Mo Designs. This, by the way, is easily the best typing experience and best looking board I've used. And the 65% size is perfect. Doesn't take up too much room on the desk, but still has all the keys I would need. I'm pretty new to the custom keyboard world and it's actually crazy how massive of a difference using something like this is compared to most of the typical off the shelf boards that I would usually buy. If you're interested, I'll leave a link in the description. You will definitely be seeing this a lot in my future videos. You also have the option to pick up a vertical GPU mount and a glass side panel if you want to see inside. 
In total, this build costs $1,502.89, but there's so much room in here that we haven't taken advantage of. If you're able to stretch your budget beyond $1,500, you could add a 316 radiator at the top or just a set of 320 millimeter fans or something like that for $30. So yeah, this PC leaves a lot of room for upgradability over the years, but let me know what you guys think about it in the comments below. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.